welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. And I'm Chris Costa. So Chris, what would you like to talk about today? Well, we've been getting a lot of questions about creating outside services, pricing of outside services. Thought we could look at maybe setting a couple of those up or sure. talk about that. That's a good question. Um, and we can talk a little bit about, the, there are kind of three ways you can do an outside service. When you win an estimating order entry, you could just create one on the fly, the estimate or order. Mm -hmm. You can create a product on the supplier ahead mm -hmm. of time so that it's there and they can just be selected in estimating order entry. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a process, laminating for example, if you have a process for laminating and you select a supplier in that process, then the system treats it like an outside service. Okay. Okay. Pricing is a good question though because that can get confusing. There's a couple of different ways to price the outside service and the enterprise uses both ways combined when it and um, we can take a look at that because it's important to understand the pricing okay. to get it right. Right. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, if we could look at an example. That'd sure. Be great. Okay. So let's start off in estimating order entry. And I'll just open a job that I already have existing and I'm going to add an outside service to it. So let me add an outside service to this business card. Say we want to send it out for laminating. So I'm going to go over to the processes tab, click on outside services. And I'll click on Add to add my laminating service. I'm going to select my supplier. And then I'll put in a description. I'll just call it laminating. I can put in instructions here if I'd like. Now here's the part that you need to be careful with. You can enter a quantity here. And what will happen is this quantity will get multiplied by whatever fixed cost you have here. That's one way to do pricing. And another way is you can enter a cost grid. Now basically the difference is if I enter a cost grid, the system's going to use the order quantity with mm -hmm. that cost grid to come up with the price. If I enter a quantity in the quantity field and a fixed cost in the fixed cost field, mm -hmm. it will multiply the quantity times the fixed cost to come up with a price. And then it adds the two together, and that's the key thing that you need to understand. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Sure. So say for this laminating process, I'm going to put in my price grid a quantity of one and say I want to charge, uh, or I'm being charged 50 cents each. I'll click OK, and that's all we'll do for now. I'm going to save this. Oh, I have to enter a GL code. Let me just grab a code, click OK, and I'll calculate this. Now, my order quantity on, on this is 1,000 business cards, so my process is a quantity of 1,000, and it's charged me 50 cents each for a cost of 500 plus my markup. Now let's say I changed the process, I edit it, and I go in, and I'm going to leave this quantity at one, and say my vendor charges me a $35 setup fee, in addition to the per each. So then I can put in that quantity field, I'll leave that at one, and put in a fixed cost, which is really a fixed unit cost, because it is being multiplied by the quantity. Right. In this case, I'm being charged one setup fee of $35, so I'm going to leave the quantity at one, mm -hmm. and put in the $35. Okay. So let's do that. I'll click OK and I'll hit calculate. So now it's charging 535. So it's added that, and it adds it together, not in a separate line item. You'll see the quantity down here, but the cost will be shown together here. Now, what you can do, there's a couple things you can do um, for, you know, say you don't want to laminate all of the cards. There's a couple of things you could do. You could put in um, a percentage to run, to say I only want to run 50% of the cards. Mm -hmm. I could also put in, if I know I only want to laminate um, 100 cards, no matter what the order quantity is, I can use the quantity field and the unit cost field and do it that way. So let's take a look at those. Okay. So say I want to laminate 100 cards. They're 50 cents each. And I'm going to get rid of this cost grid here now because I don't want it to multiply by the order quantity. I only want it to be the 100 cards. When I hit OK here and I hit Calculate, now it's charging me the $50. Now, regard with it's set up that way, regardless of what the order quantity is, if I change this to 5,000, it's still going to calculate to $50 because I've basically told it, even though there's 50,000 uh, cards, I'm only um, laminating a hundred. Right, right. The other thing you can do, oops, let me go back to my outside service. I'm going to set this back to one. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to put back my price grid. 
Now the other thing that I can do, if I, I always want to base the quantity on the order quantity, but I know I don't want to laminate all of them. Maybe I, I want to laminate 50% of them. I can put in 50 here as a percentage. And now when I hit calculate, my quantity is half. I, I changed my quantity to 5,000, so now it's only doing 2,500 at a cost of 50 cents each. Okay, makes okay. sense. Sure. So it kind of gives you a lot of flexibility in yeah, how you can I'll price see. your outside service. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, now this is obviously entering it on the fly. The estimator would just put this in on the fly. Right. What if I knew all this information up front? Can I enter it ahead of time? Right, that's So they that's can just great. select it at the time of the order? Right. And you can do that as a product on the supplier, and that's a great point, because then they mm -hmm. can just select it and don't have to enter it. Yeah, okay. that would be nice. So yeah. let's take a look at that. Okay. So I'm going to cancel out of the estimate. I'm going to go into the supplier. Select my supplier. Edit it. And you'll see I actually have a process already set up. So in here, you can set up the process. You can give it a description. You'd want to give it an ID, some sort of code. It's an alphanumeric code to identify the item. You can give it a fixed cost. And that field is what will come into the fixed cost field of the uh, process when you select it in an estimate or an order. Okay. And that's what will get multiplied against that quantity that you enter. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. You can also enter in a price grid here and it can have multiple lines that if you get a break based on quantity you can enter additional quantities here. Um, now in this case I'm this particular process is going to charge 50 cents each plus a fixed cost of $50. So with this set up I'm going to go into that same job we were in a minute ago. I'm going to edit the job, edit the process, uh, the component, and go over to outside services, and we'll add a new one. And I'll select my supplier again. And now I can select from the product ID, and that brings in the information I entered there. It brings in my fixed cost, and it also brings in my cost grid. And if I want to change the quantity here or do a percentage to run, I can then do it from here. But all the basic price information, description information has mm -hmm. been entered for me. So it makes it a lot easier for the user. Yep. And you can have, obviously, as many products as you want by supplier. Exactly. Yep. yep. Okay. Good. Okay. Perfect. And then the third way would be um, if you wanted to, if you had a laminating process already set up in your system and mm -hmm. um, maybe you know, you sometimes do it in-house, or maybe just want to set it up as a process. Mm -hmm. If you uh, attach a supplier ID to the process, the system will treat it like an outside service. Let me just okay. show you quickly how to, where to do that. Sure. You can actually do it from right within, I'll do it on the shrink wrapping, right from in the order itself. There's a supplier ID that you can select here. So I could select my supplier, and just simply by putting a supplier ID, it will be treated as an outside service. Okay. Or if I go into standards, I can actually select it here. And by doing it there, by default, it automatically comes in every time I select it. It's always treated as outside. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Do very you have good. any other questions? No, I think that was perfect. Great. Well, Excellent. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. And I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.